let's do a painting. Oh, I need my apron. Where's my apron? Hope everybody's doing good. This is Jose Trujillo. We're about to start doing some painting here. We're gonna hang out, do a little something. Hopefully you guys get to enjoy. And let's do this. Let me open the brush. Canvas ready. Good to see you, my friends. Super excited to be here right now today. And uh, let's get something started. I'll clean my brush. I got my little number four brush here. Let's clean it. Uh, Shell, Shelly says, I've been interested in, uh, to see how you paint. It's very interesting. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It's going to be fun. Check it out. So the very first thing that I do is that I get some uh, just black paint and I start sketching what I'm going to do in this case I'm going to do a a landscape okay can we see your palette and paint piles absolutely I'll be able to show that in just a little bit oh thank you so much so I'm gonna start out with a little horizon line over here okay and then we're gonna start with a little point a perspective and create a little road okay it doesn't have to be that at the end of the painting it could stay that way or it could change it doesn't really matter what matters is that we start moving towards any direction the adjustment of the painting can always happen as a, as a matter of fact the painting adjusts itself and so it happens by itself. My my uh, my wife is packaging a painting. Okay, so <laughs> all of a sudden it sounds like it sounds like like there's other things happening here. But there's a our painting is being packaged. Hi, baby. You're packaging paintings. She can't even hear me. Look at this. Very, very simple. It's just a little sketch from the beginning. That's all it is. It's just a little sketch. Okay, now we're gonna move into our into our subjects here, our trees and stuff. And I'm gonna change the brush. You don't tone the canvas before? No, I don't. Uh, I just I just go at it like that. Very cool. Yeah, I don't I don't really tone cam the canvas. Uh, it's it's a nice practice, but I I don't. I don't go after that. I just I just start moving into it and you'll see. Maybe at some future, maybe who knows, I might start toning them. I do like I do like it. I'm not gonna lie. I do like it when I I used to do it, but I stopped. What's up, Vivek? 
So this is what's happening right here. Check it out. These are our trees right here. Somewhat of our trees, right? Very simple gestures will make our trees. And, and the trick is to the, the trick is to enjoy every brush stroke. Okay. Every brush stroke counts. Every, every brush stroke matters. No matter how seemingly unimportant it may look, everyone really matters. So we enjoy everyone, every single one of them. Very, very simple. I'm gonna get a little bit of that blue, mix it, and put it back here. Nothing is forced, everything is, is um, everything we just kind of glide through it. Nothing is over. Not, 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 nothing we do here, we overthink either. Okay, there's no overthinking in any of it. Um, and that's how we start discovering the painting. Like I, I mentioned many times, like a good relationship, um, whether it's romantic or familial or whatever, a good relationship, there's not much thinking. Right? It'll, it'll, ruin, it'll ruin the relationship if there's too much thinking in it. Because then that's the place where judgment judgment happens. The overthinking leads to judgment, and then the judgment leads to all kinds of other negative feelings. And so we enjoy the presence of, of the painting, just like we enjoy the presence of good company. Like that. In the same way. Whatever it is, yellow, kind of like an ochre yellow with um, yellow with a little bit of burnt sienna. If you're not using my palette, you're probably doing something like this with burnt sienna. Um, yellow and burnt sienna would probably be the, the best choice. If you're using my palette, I'll show you in a little bit. It's, it's pale yellow with red, black, and purple. Makes it really nice. Burnt Sienna. Look at that. That's what I've been trying trying to do, not think too much. Yeah, that's that's the liberation, right? That's the liberation of the mind. What are your favorite motifs to paint? I have a few of them. They vary. Sometimes I sometimes I completely move from from landscapes and and birds and plants flowers seascapes to uh, every now and then I move into completely uh, surrealist things you know uh, to surrealist thoughts like like uh, I don't know all kinds of weird 
surrealist things using the same style of course because it, it, it fits it fits the style at least in my mind it doesn't have to be hyper realistic to create surrealism it fits the style just fine so I'll, I'll jump from motif to motif the most important thing is to enjoy if you don't in if you're not enjoy right enjoying your painting um, there's some sort of um, agitation happening and whether it's personal or it's about the painting or you know, values where I struggle <laughs> yeah yeah the value the value is uh, it's it's pretty important but it's not it's not the most important thing but it's pretty important especially if you're trying to do some sort of realism Honey, I, I think I think the FedEx is here, no? No, it's UPS from the Oh. Okay. Oh, let me tell. No, no, no. Let me tell him that. I'm gonna take it. Where's my mask? Give me a second, guys. They just do. All right, I'm back, guys. Sorry about that. I get a, I get UPS coming and taking stuff, paintings. All right, let's keep moving. Gotta put some. Uh... Didn't you just schedule it, Yeah, they 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 go fast. It's uh, three days, three days scheduling. It's okay. They, they know that I take them. All right. Look at that. How's it going, Julie? Okay, so I'm gonna get a little bit of purple, very little, with white, lots of white. And we're gonna put our, our little road right here. Yeah, it can be a little it can be a little loud here in my studio. From time to time. Sometimes I even get a rock band next to my studio. There's a there's another uh, warehouse and they've been playing lately they've been playing uh they've been rent i think they've been renting it to a to a musician to a, um, a rock band metal rock band of all things right but that's for another story look at this This is just how you do it. You see, every brushstroke has to be perfect in the sense that it's honored. It's not because it's perfect, like, like oh, what a perfect brushstroke. No. In the sense that every brushstroke is, is honored. And the, the way that you honor it is by not, not overthinking. 
You give it its. You don't limit it. You don't limit it by your 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 ideas, your prejudices, your your. It's good. It's bad. It's not a good brush stroke, or it's not a good color. You don't do any of that to it. You leave it alone. You let it be, and then when you let it be, it actually starts rewarding you. But it's not until you let it be. Let me uh. Close this door. You see how simple that is? Do you use medium? I do. I use I use walnut oil. Um, but I don't. I'm not mixing. I'm not mixing my brush in the medium. Let me let me show you what I mean by this. So, so I don't. This is my medium. It's walnut oil. I don't. I don't. I never even touch it except when I'm going to clean my brush. But here's what I'm doing. Okay. Let me. How you guys don't get. You see, I don't even mind. I don't even mind what's what color I have in my brush, because values, uh, tints, highlights, shades, they're all they're all stuck in my mind, anyways. But practice will do that. It'll get everything stuck in your mind, and so you don't need to constantly look back and look back. It's kind of like when you're learning how to drive in the beginning. You're constantly checking everything, right? You're checking your mirrors, you're checking everything. And then when you learn how to drive, it's kind of, it happens by itself, almost. You can even have a conversation while you're driving and whatnot. Uh, but it doesn't mean you're not paying attention. You're still paying attention, but, it, but something else is paying attention now. Right? You're subconscious or you're uh, a different consciousness that's happening. And it's very much like that when you're painting. Um, the difference is that when when you paint it's not mechanical so if you if you thought that i was that i was trying to say that it was mechanical no i was try, just trying to give the example of driving but it's not necessarily mechanical if it was it, 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 there couldn't be anything um spontaneous and and creative about painting what makes a painting is is the how spontaneous and how creative it is otherwise it's just a repetition of another painting and so it's not quite mechanical, but, but there is a level of, of trust, is what I try to say. Trust, not, not, a, not mechanical driving, but trust. You begin to trust yourself. You're still paying attention, but you start trusting yourself. And it's a very nice way to paint because you don't hold negativity around it which is one of the most one of the biggest things that artists do is or challenges that we do as artists is is uh there is a this this feeling of of not being good enough of not i'm just not good enough i'm not you know i don't understand i need to know more you don't really need to know more you need to you need to know less you need to know less to paint you need to know less you have to become smaller to really paint. But but in the beginning, if you're if you're a newbie, right? If you're new, in the beginning, you do have to do a, a, a great deal of, of, of knowing, a great deal of thinking. You're learning about composition, color theory, and all those things. But at some point, those things need to you need to put them away. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to paint. You you're only going to be able to illustrate. But not never quite paint. You're gonna be able to illustrate. You're gonna be able to do something pretty, but never quite paint. Never quite do create art until you start putting it away, putting putting that knowledge away, and start 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 trusting yourself and doing that you're doing good. That you're you're able to to go to 
unknown unknown places when you're creating artwork you're going to you're going to start experience experimenting in unknown places if that makes any sense I was having more fun in the beginning before I knew nothing. That is very true. The most, the most fun is when you know less. That's why children have so much fun when they're painting. And then when they become art students, they feel like they have artist block. Why do they have artist block when they become art students? Children learn how to paint before they learn how to draw because human expression is at the core of our existence. They learn how to sing before they learn how to talk. Yeah. You ever pay attention to little little children? They in the cradle, they're humming, they're always humming. Mm, they're always humming because because human expression is at the core of who we are. We learn how to we learn how to dance before we learn how to walk too. Painting is one of those things. You give any child, give him a give him a crane, give him some paper. Don't give him a crane, don't give him paper. They're, they'll start creating artwork on the floor, on the walls. It's it's at the core. And so not knowing is 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 extremely important for creating uh, artwork. It is very very important. You have to become as a little child if you truly want to paint. I know it sounds kind of prophetic and messianic. Messian is that how you say it? Me me uh, from the Messiah, no? Messianic? Messianico? <laughs> but you do have to. It's, it's not a bad idea to become a little child if you actually want to learn how to paint. If you if you're enjoying what you're doing, you're you're creating art. That's the that's the the marker. That's how you can gauge whether you're creating art or you're just painting. Is there joy? Not just happiness. Is there a sense of peace in the background? If there is, you're you're Sure as hell creating artwork, regardless of your skill set, your skill level. It doesn't matter, you can mix colors, paint, don't let anybody stop you from that just because, you know, it, the, your skill set is meaningless when it comes to the to truly creating artwork is about expression and, and an empty mind, using an empty mind, just like a child. That's really what makes an artist. Look at that. And so when you when you paint for quite a bit, like myself or other artists, you have to start training yourself to quiet your mind. To begin, isn't that isn't that crazy? Now that you have the theory, you have some skill set. Now the the challenge, the new challenge is. You learn how to quiet your mind so that you're able to use that theory that you know, that skill set that you have, you're able to use it at will and, and peacefully. So that way you can enjoy yourself. As if you were a child, but this time around, you're like a, you're like a sort of a, a prodigal son. Now you have the knowledge. Right? You come back with knowledge. There's, there's, there's the empty mind and knowledge. You have both. You have, you have some sort of theory or practice. And the empty mind, and now you're dancing. The whole thing is dancing. Yeah. That's art. Yeah. I mean, it's, you're going to continue learning. We never stop learning, but, but but you don't have to to enjoy. You don't have to 
get to a place where you know to enjoy art you can start enjoying art right now and making making real art without knowing the theory you can start doing that now it's not a piano you don't need to learn notes yeah it's definitely not a piano okay my friends let me show you the front there's a price to pay in a piano, in an instrument, in a guitar. In painting, the, 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 there's, the, you don't need to pay a price. You don't need to pay a, a practice price. You can. You don't need to. Let's do another one. I'm going to be auctioning this painting, by the way. This painting is going to be auctioned, before I forget. This painting is going to be auctioned on, on Instagram. And then I'm going to auction it on eBay if it doesn't sell on Instagram. This is what I've been doing lately. Um, and it seems to be uh, it seems to be working for a lot of people, including myself, of course. But it seems to be a, a good thing. Uh, people have been asking me, what if I don't want to go to eBay and compete with other buyers, with a lot more buyers uh, than you know, can can you just sell it to me here on Instagram? And so I've been agreeing to not sell it because there's a couple of buyers that want the same painting, uh, but auction it simply at, at starting the the auction bid a little higher, <laughs> a little higher than on eBay. On eBay, I start the auctions at one dollar. Here, I'm starting the auctions of of these pieces at around two and three hundred dollars, and so so there's a higher chance of winning it because not everybody is fighting for it it's usually two three it's getting a little bit more people now i have you know i have a couple more people but but nowhere near as much as as ebay when it goes to ebay there's hundreds of people bidding on the same painting so it's a very different deal all right my friends hope you enjoy this i'm going to charge my phone and i'm going to be back and show you guys some more other uh, art pieces take care and i'll talk to you guys Soon. Stay well.